Welcome back. This is Part-Time Guardian. It's that time of the season where we're going to talk about what the best build is coming into the season, specifically for you guys who are trying to do eventually Nightfall, especially GMs, Lost Sectors, and Raids, and things like that. Every season this changes based on mods, what's in the seasonal pass and everything, and we are going to talk about that right now. So first off, let me talk about the goal of what I'm trying to accomplish with this build. The goal of this is always in endgame content, I want to be as survivable as possible. But I also want to be able to help my fire team, and I want to be able to do as much DPS as possible. And with some of the mods, and what I'll talk about here, we can definitely do that. Now, look for the timestamps in the video. If you have a good understanding of how basic builds work, there are you can obviously move to later portions of the video. But for those who aren't, I'm going to fill you in. First off, for this build, I'm going to use Bottom Tree Night Stalker. The primary reason for that is I'm going to use, there is a buff on Bottom Tree Night Stalker called Heart of the Pack. This is when you put your smoke bomb on yourself and other people. Everyone gets one stack, plus 34 armor, recovery, stability, and improves weapon reload and handling, and can stack three times. So again, if you do this quickly, and you're in a tough spot, you can actually increase those things right up to 100%, which is really good. Second with Bottom Tree is I'm going to use Gambler's Dodge, so then when I'm near enemies and I dodge... I get my melee back. Now, what's 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 good about that? Well, your melee in this case is your smoke bomb, which again, if you get that back, allows you to do heart of the pack and go invisible. One of the other reasons for this is that there have been recent changes to mods, I'll talk about in a second, and some exotics that really synergize well with this. So first off, let's talk about the mod loadout, and I'll start with things that have changed specifically from the TWAB. And, and before I get started, I know there's a lot of controversy about whether elemental mod builds are good because you have to go get the you have to actually go get the well. So first off, with the nerfing of war mines, that does bring those type of builds down a little bit. They're still useful, but it actually helps with making some decisions about whether you use this. Now, I do know you have to get the wells. With a hunter, with going invisible and moving around the battlefield, getting wells is never going to be a problem. And there is even a mod later on in the season that you can get that actually allow wells to come back to you. So again, I think the elemental well builds are still very valuable. And I don't think, especially for a hunter, we can go invisible. I don't think they're hard that, that hard to use. So first off, I want to use Font of Might. So this mod was probably not something I didn't really use a whole lot in the past, but now with the recent TWAB changes, it went from plus 10% to plus 25% damage on elemental wells of the same buffs as a weapon of the same type. So in other words, if you have, let's say I have Void in this case, and use a Void weapon, you're going to get plus 25% damage buff, which stacks with other things. It's also been increased to 10 seconds, so that's really helpful. Elemental Armaments. Also, in the past, it's something I really wouldn't use. In the past, this was around getting kills and you had an escalating chance to get wells. Well, in this case, it's based not only on escalation, but the tier of the enemies you're killing. So if you're killing champions, if you're killing higher level enemies, you're going to get a better chance of getting wells. So again, that's why I'm going to free up a slot to use this. So then we have Reaping Wellmaker. That's one I use in a lot of my builds. You spawn Void Wells after class ability. So basically, think about it this way. If I use my class ability, which is my dodge, which gives me my smoke bomb back, and then I kill an enemy, that's how you proc it, you'll immediately get a well. It's guaranteed it'll happen every time. Since you're constantly going to be dodging, constantly getting your invisibility back, this is a no-brainer for this build. Well of Tenacity. If you pick up a void well, you reduce damage over a short period of time. Now, it is particularly short, and you'll see when you actually get this, that you'll actually get like a buff. Your, 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 your actual uh, your HUD will turn a little bit different color. And it only lasts for a little bit of time. But again, this is sort of a, oh crap, I'm having problems. I need to get out of dodge really quickly. And that's where that helps. And it gives you a good amount of damage protection. And the next mod is Particle Deconstruction, which is at the end of your seasonal pass. And if you haven't gotten there yet, watch this video where I tell you the easiest way to do that. It allows you to get five stacks on fusion, linear fusion rifles of increasing escalating damage. So this is probably going to be good on stuff like Merciless and stuff like that. But any fusion rifle or linear fusion rifle, it's going to be do all five stacks. It's going to give you a 40% buff to damage. There is a Reddit thread where they kind of talk about that and some of the broken nature of this that I'm going to talk about later in this video. This mod is definitely the breach and clear of the season. You need to get it now. Finally, Graviton Forfeit. Graviton Forfeit is something I would use every once in a while, but I would typically use Omnoculus in a build like this. But they've changed it. With the last TWAB, they talk about you get longer invisible. You recover on invisible. So while you're invisible, you actually get recovery. So if you're in trouble, you need to go hide for a minute. You'll actually get recovery. This will be really useful in GMs. 
Your weapons reload more quickly also during invisibility. So again, with those and with the build that I'm putting together, Graviton Forfeit actually can help out quite a bit. Now, if you want to use Omnioculus, that's fine. I think that will work in this build too. But I actually like Graviton for this particular reason. So now let's talk about the synergy. You're going to dodge, which is going to allow you to spawn individual wells when you kill enemies. That gives you your melee energy back, which allows you to go invisible, which you grabs your recovery bonus and additional visibility. Your melee generation now increased based on being near enemies. Also, using Smoke Bomb allows you to give yourself heart of the pack as well as your fire team. The bones of this build allow you to stay alive with damage reduction and increased recovery. They allow you to protect your fire team with heart of the pack, go invisible to recover and revive teammates, which again is really useful. I, I know people are like, well, I don't want to use a hunter in a GM. I get it. I use Warlock and everything too. But with a hunter, you can really bail yourself out when you're stuck and people are in bad positions to go get recovery. So that's really good too. It provides buffs on DPS to bosses with Tether. Again, that's for your whole fire team. And provides incredible DPS during boss encounters. And again, that's what I'm going to talk about in a second. Because there's an actual bug. I don't know if it's a bug. There is a way that you can use Particle Accelerator where you can get some crazy damage numbers. Again, similar to like Star Eater scales from last season. And I would get on this before Bungie potentially patches this. Unless this was designed. But my guess is, because of the way you have to sequence this, this is probably something they're going to patch over time. So now, let's talk about some of the damage numbers. So before that, let's talk about the weapons. So first off with primaries, primaries were something you really didn't consider in a lot of endgame content. But now with having unlimited ammo, I think you have to think about it differently. Because now if you are towards the end of a GM or something like that and you're running ammo, you won't. The other advantage of this is now if you're in a non-lockable, not GM, but if you're in another like a raid or something like that, because primaries have unlimited ammo, you can actually sub. You can say, okay, well now I want to do this one because let's say I have bows and I want to do different uh, burn damage or stuff like that, I can freely swap them without worrying about any sort of da uh, fall off with my ammo that's in my weapon. And again, with this build, it's very void, void focus. What you notice, I think Bungie's trying to do that. They're trying to, to do these synergetic builds where you use similar burns across the build. So with this build, you're going to have to have people, if they're trying to take shields down, that probably will have to use arc and solar and other things. But I'm going in hard on this because I think it really helps. So Lamarnarch. You'll be able to stun champions with this, and with its poison ability, it will do so over time. Also, since it's a primary, you get infinite ammo. And again, with Fauna Might, you also, because it's a void weapon, when you have a when you pick up a well, you'll get additional damage to what you're doing to the enemy. With again, it's also poison, which will do it over time. In this example, I'm using Chroma Rush. You could use a different auto rifle. I'm using this for anti-barrier. You could use a different one, but again, it's a primary. Again, same thing. I'm not gonna run out of ammo. And I tell you, an auto rifle, even though it's not an end game weapon, it is something that's good for utility and killing ads over time. So again, if you have this master work, you can just drop all sorts of orbs over time. And then I'm getting threaded needle. I have one with clown cartridge and vorpal. You slap a boss spec on that and it will slap with a new fusion meta that's in the game. And again, you could use other weapons. This is what I'm going to use for this example. So with that, let's talk about some of the damage. So I'm going to go to my favorite law sector and I'm going to talk to our friend George. Um, he's just chilling here. I'm going to show you the damage that we're going to do against George. Again, with Particle Accelerator and some of the other mods. So first off, your base damage to George when you hit a crit is 52,347. Okay. And again, that's with my Vorpal and that's with my boss spec. Font of Might, when you pick that up, is going to add a 25% uh, buff to that. So again, it's six, 65,434. Then... If I do Fauna Might plus a Tether, that buffs it by another 30%. That gives me 85,064 points, which again, that's pretty good. And again, by yourself, that allows you pretty easily to do a lot of extra damage. But it gets better when we talk about the potential bug that's on Particle Deconstruction. So to do that, I'm going to go to Callie. And I'm not going to try to do anything fu funny with Callie because the problem with Callie is she moves around a lot. It's, it's hard, especially with a fusion rifle, to get crit. So I'm just going to do a base body damage. But if I do damage to Cali and I start on again with, with Threaded Needle, I'm not going to be able to get the full effect of this because I don't have enough ammo in my uh, in the initial gun with the fact that Cali is going to go to her, basically wiping you very quickly. So you're only going to get a, a piece of this, but I will show you the math again. Look at that thread that I posted within Reddit. So for Cali, the base damage when I hit her just in the body is... 5,918. As I continue to escalate that, as I do times one, it's 6,332, 
which is a 7% buff. Then I do a times two, which is 6,775, which is a 14% buff. Then I do a times three, which is 7,249, which is 22% buff. Then I do times four, which is 7,756, which is a 31% buff. Now, if I continued and I did another one, it would be a total of 40% bonus damage with this particular effect from this mod. But here's something you can do. If you do tether before you do that, it's not going to help you out with so much. However, one bug we found is that if you get the full stacks and you actually add the tether, it gets you an incredible amount of damage. In this case, with a full stack, with a tether, I'm getting an 82% bonus damage. And you could even add to that. You could potentially do Fauna Might and add on top of it. Um, I didn't do that for this because just that's difficult with this encounter to kind of set up. But again, you can see how you can continue to add to that and do some crazy DPS numbers. So that's the entire point of this build. You're going to stay alive longer. You're going to keep your fire team longer, alive longer. You're going to be able to go invisible and protect everyone. And at the same time, you're going to do crazy DPS. And again, as we explore this, I'm sure there's other options, other weapons. Again, I would love for you guys to jump into my Discord, to subscribe to my channel, and maybe get in the comments here and talk about what kind of things you would like to do, what kind of differences you like to do in the build, what kind of different weapons you would use. And again, I'll see you guardians in the tower.